Lesson 9, Loading and Displaying Bitmaps. To follow along with this lesson, download the project from the top of our lesson page at zoax.net. We begin this lesson with our Win32 Lesson 1 project and add our bitmap handling code to it. Here we have the file win32lesson1.cpp. After our init instance function, we add our load and blit bitmap function. This function defines most of the new code that was added for this lesson. This function takes a file name and a handle to the device context of the window that will display the bitmap. At the beginning of the function, we call the windows function load image to load our bitmap image. Load image has many capabilities, but we only want to use it to simply load a bitmap image. So we will ignore the, most of the parameters of the function and simply remark that the second parameter is the file name and path of our bitmap file. This is the wide character string that was passed into the function as an argument. After we call load image, we get a handle to the loaded bitmap object. We need to check that this handle is not null since a null handle means that the loading was not successful. Loading can fail for many reasons, but the most likely reason is that the file name and path of the image were not specified correctly. If the handle is null, we pop up a message box so that we can see where the failure occurred and return false. If the bitmap was successfully loaded, then we create a memory device context that is compatible with the Windows device context. Calling create compatible DC with the handle to the Windows device context creates a memory device context that is returned by the function. Like the previous load image function, this function can also fail, so we need to check the return value before going on. To get information about the bitmap that we loaded, we need to call the get object function. This function puts the information about the image into a bitmap structure. The bitmap structure contains many elements, but we are only concerned with the width and height of the image in pixels right now. After we call get object, we check the return value to make sure that the call succeeded. Then we select the bitmap into the device context that we created using the function select object. Afterward, we check that this call succeeded. At this point, we should say something about device context. Device contexts hold pens, brushes, bitmaps, and many other state variables for display and drawing. The bitmap that we selected into the memory device context that we created acts as its drawing surface, just like the device context for the window uses a screen as its drawing surface. We can transfer part of one device context drawing surface to the drawing surface of another device context by using the bitblit function like this. This first parameter is the handle to the destination device context. In this case, the destination is the Windows device context. The next four parameters specify the region of the destination device context that we will blit to. The first two parameters are the X and Y coordinates of the upper left hand corner. The next two parameters are the width and height of the region. The sixth parameter is the handle to the source device context. The next two parameters are the X and Y coordinates of the upper left hand corner of the region that we want to transfer. Finally, the last parameter tells how the image gets transferred. In this case, we use a source copy to specify that we perform a simple copy from the source. Finally, we make a check to see that the blit was successful. Then we select our old bitmap into our device context and deallocate the device context and the bitmap. In the WM Paint Handler, we make a call to our load and blit bitmap function. We can use the full file path like this or we can use the file path relative to the project. Since we have put our image in the same location as the project, we can simply use the file name. In this example, we have put the entire sequence from loading to blitting into our paint handler. This is only done to keep the code simple. Recall that painting is performed every time the window gets changed or exposed, so we normally only want to do the blitting inside of the paint handler and leave the rest to be done elsewhere. We will illustrate this when we make use of bitmaps in upcoming programs. To run our program, rebuild the solution by selecting Build in the menu bar and Rebuild Solution in the submenu. When the code is done building, select Debug in the menu bar and start without debugging in the submenu to execute the code. You should see the application window with the Zoex.net logo image displayed in it. This concludes the lesson.